to sleep but, what, three hours in the night? Oh, these are bearable tasks. Too hard to keep, not to see ladies, study fast, not to sleep. Your oath is passed to pass away from these. Well, then let me say no, my liege. And if you please, I only swore to study with your grace and stay here in your court for three years' space. You swore to that, bro, and to the rest. <laughs> but yea and yay, yay, sir. Well, then I swore in jest. <laughs> <laughs> what is the end of the study? Let me know. Why, well, but to know which else we should not know. Oh, well, come on then. I will study so to know the thing I am forbid to know. As thus, I will study where I well may die. <laughs> I expressly am forbid. <laughs> or I may study where I may meet some mistress fine. <coughs> Mistresses from common sense are <laughs> These be the snobs that hinder study quite and train our intellects to vain delight. Why, all delights are vain. <laughs> <laughs> but that most vain with which pain purchased doth inherit pain. As painfully to pour upon a book to see the light of truth. While well, truth the while doth falsely by the eyesight of his look. Light seeking light doth light of light and die. Oh, how well he's read! <laughs> to reason against reading. Proceeded well to stop all good proceeding. He weeds the corn and still lets grow the weeding. The road is like an envious, sleeping frost that bites the firstborn infants of the spring. Well, say I am. I mean, why should proud summer boast before the birds have any cause to sing? But, like of each thing that in season grows. Well, sit you out, Baron. Go home, adieu. No, my good lord, I swore to stay with you. Okay, give me the paper. Let me read the same and the strictest decrees I'll write by it. I know <coughs> that no woman shall come within a mile of my court. <coughs> this thing will claim four days ago. Let's see the penalty. <coughs> On pain of losing her tongue, <laughs> who devised this penalty? <laughs> Mary, that did I. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> to fright them, hence with that dread penalty. It's a dangerous law against gentility. <laughs> I know. If any man be seen to talk with a woman within the term of three years, he shall endure such public shame as the rest of the court can possibly devise. <laughs> <laughs> this article, my liege, yourself must break. I mean, for well you know, he comes in embassy the French king's daughter with yourself to speak. Well, what say you, lords? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, beat us to style, sugar. 
Jesus caused to find the matter of it is, as concerning Jacqueline, the <laughs> manner of it is, I was uh, taken with the manner, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> In uh, what manner? In manner and form following, man, all those three. I was seen with her in the manor house, sitting upon the form, and taken, following her, into the park. <laughs> the simplicity of that, to hearken after the flag. <laughs> Great deputy, the welcome visitant and sole dominator of Navarre, my soul's earth's god and body's fostering nature. Not a mention of costume. <laughs> so it is. Maybe so, but if you say it is so, he isn't telling the truth, but so. Uh, Peace! Speak to me and every man that dares not fight. <laughs> no words! Other man's secrets, out of secret. <laughs> So it is. <laughs> Maybe so. Uh, 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 <laughs> so it is. Besieged with sable-colored melancholy, I did command the black, oppressing humor to the most wholesome physic of thy health-giving air, and, as I am a gentleman, took myself to walk. The time went, about the sixth hour, when beasts best graze, birds best peck, and men sit down to that nourishment, which is called supper. I love supper, man. <laughs> there did I see that low-spirited swain, that base minnow of thy mirth. Me? That unlettered and small knowing soul. Yeah, that sounds like me, man. <laughs> that shallow vassal. Still me. <laughs> Which as I remember, like Coster. Oh uh, yeah, that's me, man. <laughs> sorted and consorted, contrary to thy established, proclaimed edict and continent canon with. Oh, wherewith? I passion to say wherewith. With the wench. With a child of our grandmother Eve, a female, or for thy sweet graces, sweeter understanding, a woman. Yes, that's correct. Him, I, as my ever esteemed duty pricks me on, have sent to thee to receive the meed of punishment by thy sweet graces officer, Anthony Dull, a man of excellent carriage, bearing, repute, and estimation. Me shall please you, I am Anthony Dahl. <laughs> or Jack Monetta, for so the weaker vassal is called, which I apprehended with the aforesaid swain. <laughs> Thine in all compliments of hot, burning, and devoted duty, Don Adriano di Armado. Well, this is not so well as I looked for, but the best that ever I heard. I the best for the worst. But, Sir Al, what say you to this? Yes, sir, I confess the wench. Did you hear the proclamation? I do confess much of the hearing of it, but a little of the marking of it. <laughs> it wasn't claimed a year's imprisonment to be taken with a wench. Uh, I was taken with them, sir. No, I was taken with a damsel. Well, it was so very, it was proclaimed damsel. <laughs> no, this was no damsel, neither, man. I was taken with a virgin. Well, it was so fair, it was proclaimed version. If it is so, then I deny her virginity. I was taken with a maid. <laughs> this maid will not serve your turn, sir. This maid will serve my turn, sir. Strike. <laughs> <laughs> sir, I pronounce your sentence. You will fast for one week with bran and water. Well, I'd rather pray month on mutton and porridge. And Don Armado shall be your keeper. Oh, for us. No we lords, to put in practice that which each to other hath so strongly sworn. I'll lay my head to any good man's hat. These oaths and laws will prove that I have sworn. <coughs> Come on, sir. Hey, man. I suffer for the truth, man. <laughs> and true it is. I was taken with Jack Winetta. And let me tell you, Jack Winetta.
be heavily punished. Well, men, I am more bound to you than your fellows, for they are <coughs> likely to Take away this villain! Shut your pup! Come, you transgressing slave! Away! Yeah. Oh, <laughs>
something else. Oh, your ladyship is ignorant what it is. I hear your grace hath sworn out housekeeping. <coughs> Tis deadly sin to keep that oath, my lord, and sin to break it. But pardon me, I am too sudden bold. Vouchsafe to read the purpose of my mind. Did not I dance with you in Bradford once? Did not I dance with you in Bradford once? I know you did. How needless was it then to ask the question? You must not be so quiet. Tis long of you to spur me with such questions. Your wit's too hot, it speeds too fast, go time. Not to believe the rider in the mind. <laughs>
Jacquinetta. There is remuneration for the best word of my honor is rewarding my dependents. Ma, ma. Like the sequel, I, Senior Custard. I do. Later. <laughs> now will I look to his remuneration. Okay. Remuneration. Remuneration. Oh, that's the Latin word for three farthings. Three farthings, man. Can you believe it? Remuneration. Uh, my uh, good name, Custard. Exceedingly well met. Pray you, man, how much carnation ribbon can a man buy with a remuneration? <laughs> What is the remuneration? Mary, man, a half penny farthing. <laughs> Come on. Why is it three farthings worth of silver? I thank your worship. God be with you. Oh, stay. <laughs> I must employ you. When would you have it done, sir? This afternoon. I will do it, sir. Fare thee well. Thou knowest not what it is. Well, I will know, man, when I have done it. <laughs> <laughs> My villain, thou must know first. I will come to your worship tomorrow morning. It must be done this afternoon. This afternoon. Hark, slave. It is but this. The princess comes to serve you. In her train is a gentle lady. <laughs> when tongue speaks sweetly, they name her name, and Rosalind, they call her. Name. Ask for her. And to her white hand, see thou do command this seal counsel. Ah. <laughs> Get it? Okay, man. I will do it in print. Get it? Ah, oh, even better than remuneration. Get it? Remuneration of letters? This is a crazy day for costumes. <laughs>
Oh, thou monster ignorance! How to fall! 
Lord dost thou love? He hath never fed of the dainties that are bred in a book. He hath not eat paper as it were. He hath not drunk ink. His intellect is not refreshed. <laughs> but only bene say I, being of an old father's mind, many can work the weather that love not the wind. Hey, you two are bookmen. Can you tell me by your wit who was a month old at King's birth? The moon was a month old when Adam was no more, and brought not to five weeks when he came to five score. Five school for team illusion holds in exchange. It's true indeed. The collusion holds in the exchange. God comfort thy capacity, I say. I say the pollution holds in the <laughs> The moon is never but a month old. Sort of it. Will you hear an extemporal attack from the death of the deer? Purge, good mistress, how the friend is purged, so it shall please you to abrogate sterility. I will something affect the letter. For an arduous facility. The prayful princess pierced and pricked a pretty, pleasing cricket. Some say a sore, but not a sore till now made sore with shooting. The dogs did yell, put L to sore, then sore L jumps from the thicket. A rare talent. <laughs> this is a gift for the cow. <laughs> a foolish extravagant spirit. Forms, figures, shapes, objects. Thank you. 
Marvelous well for the men. I didn't die today. I the bottles of the certain pupil of mine, where, if before past, it shall please you to gratify the table with a grace, then I may, with the privilege I have with the parents of the foresaid child of pupil, undertake your benvenuto. Then thank you, too. For society, saith the text, is the happiness of life. Aruba, Jamaica, oh, I want to take ya. Bermuda, Bahama, I'm a pretty mama. Yara, Montego, Cape, Vital Fever, Jamaica, Florida. Oh, 
pitch to toil. I am toiling in a pitch, a pitch that defiles. Well, that's a foul word. Well, then set thee down in sorrow, for so they say, the fool said, and so say I, and I the fool, well proved with <laughs> I have an eye to love, and it hath taught me to rhyme, I have to be melancholy. <laughs> and here is part of my rhyme, and here my melancholy. Well, she hath one of my sonnets already, the cloud glory, fool scented, and the lady hath it. <laughs> Sweet clown, sweeter fool, the sweetest lady. By the world, I would not care a pin if the other three were in. Here comes one with papers. God give him grace to grow. I, me, a shot by heaven. Proceed, sweet Cupid. Thou hast stumped him with thy bird bolt under the left half. In famous secrets. <laughs> so sweet a kiss the golden sun gives not to those fresh morning drops of the rose as thy eye beams, when their fresh rays have smote the night of dew that on my cheeks down floats. Nor shines the silver moon one half so bright through the transparent bosom of the deep, as doth thy face through tears of mine give light. Thou shinest in every tear that I do weep. O oh, queen of queens, how far thou dost excel, no thought can think, nor tongue of mortal tell. Oh, how shall she know my griefs? I'll drop the paper. Sweet leaves, shade, folly. Who is he comes here? Bogdan. <laughs> In thy likeness, one more fool appeared. I mean, I am forsworn. He comes like a perjure, wearing papers. Oh, in love, I hope, sweet fellowship and shame. One drunkard loves another of the name. And I, the first that have been perjured so? Well, I could put thee in comfort. Not by two that I know, thou makest a triumphant. I fear these stubborn lines lack power to move. Oh, sweet Mariah, empress of my love, these numbers will I tear. Write in prose. Oh, well, rhymes are bars on wanton Cupid's hose. Disfigure not his sloth. <laughs> this saying shall go. Did not the heavenly rhetoric of thine eye, against whom the world cannot hold argument, persuade my heart to this false perjury? A woman I forswore, but I will prove thou being a goddess. I forswore not thee. <laughs> Press my trust. 
who loves fast and pain. Oh, were the king Verona long ago a lover's too, ill to example ill, but from my forehead wipe a perfect note for her. None offend where all alike do doubt. To me, thy love is far from charity. You may but appeal, but I should blush, I know. We are taken and not in so. Come, sir, you blush. For this, your case is such. You shy to him, and twice as much. I heard your guilty rhymes, observed your fashion, saw sighs reek from you. Oh, know it well, your passion. I Says the one, oh, show the other cries. One, her hair is with gold, crystal the other's eyes. You would for paradise, great faith and troth, and Jove, for your love, would infringe an oath. Oh, what will Barone say when he shall hear faith so infringe, which with such a seal did swear? How will he scorn? How will he spend his wit? How will he triumph? Leap and laugh at it. Now step I forth to whip hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> Traitors stay. <laughs> 
therefore, the all hands must be enforced. What? Do these red lines show some love of thine? Did they, quote you? Who sees the heavenly Rosaline? That was not his. Vassal head struck and blind kisses the base ground. Obedient breast. <laughs> what peremptory eagle sighted eye dares look upon the heaven of her brow that is not blinded by her majesty? <laughs> what zeal, what fury will inspire thee now? My love is a gracious moon. She but an attendant star, scarce seen a light. And then my eyes are no eyes, nor I the road. Oh, no. but for my love, day would turn to night. Lend me the flourish of all gentle tongues. Fine, painted rhetoric. Oh, she needs a cat. She passes praise, then praise too short, off block. But what of this? Are not we all in love? Oh, nothing so sure, and thereby all forsworn. Then leave this chat and good her own. Now prove our loving lawful. And our faith not torn. Aye, marry there. Some flattery for this evil. Oh, some authority had it received, some tricks, some quillets. How to the devil? Some salve for perjury. <laughs> Tis more than me. Well, how that you then, affections men at arms? Consider what you first did swear unto. To fast, to study, to see no women. It's flat treason against the kingly state of youth. <laughs> <laughs> Say, can you fast? Your stomachs are too young, and abstinence engenders maladies. For when would you, my lord, or you, or you, the foul ground of study's excellence without the view of the other woman's face? A lover's eye will gaze at the blind. A lover's ear will hear the lowest sound. From women's eyes this doctrine I derive. They sparkle, still the right, Promethean fire. They are books. The arts, the academes, that show, contain, and nourish all the world. So let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves, or else we lose ourselves to keep our oaths. But Saint Cupid then, and soldiers to the field, advance your standards, and upon the thorns, hell mell down with them. But if they advise that in conflict you get the son of them, now to plain deal. Shall we resolve to woo these girls of France? Aye, and win them too. Therefore, let us devise some entertainment for them in their defense. Well, first, from the park, let us conduct them thither. Uh, then homeward every man attached to the hand of his fair mistress, and in the afternoon we will with some strange pastime solace them. Away, away, no time shall be omitted. No good time, and may by us be fitted. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
entire sweet pleasure at the mountain. I did such questions. Ma'am, it is the king's most sweet pleasure and affection to congratulate the princess at her pavilion in the posteriors of the day, which we, the rude multitude, call the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> this, 
spirit, vouchsafe not to behold. Once to behold, bro. Once to behold. <laughs> With your sun beaming up. I'll take my answer to that upset. You're better off calling his daughter beaming up. <laughs> they do not work me, and that brings me out. Is this your perfectness? Oh, be gone, you rogue. <laughs> Know their mind, Toya. If they do speak our language, tis our will that some plain man recount their purposes. Know what they would. Okay. <clears throat> what would you with the princess? Go think about peace and gentle visitation. <laughs>
have several ways. Glad you do. Are these the breed of wits so wondered at? That have been pretty mistresses gathered here, and me and you can be again in the For it can never be that they will digest such harsh and dignity. But will they return? They will, they will. God knows and leap for joy. Though they are laying with blows. Thus, change favors, and when they return, blow like sweet roses in the summer's air. Bum, 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 bum
Here's that guy, lady. Gone by skillet me. Bruised me with scorn. Confound me with flout. Thrust thy sharp bit quite through my ignorance. Cut me pieces with thy keen conceit. Thenceforth, my blue mind shall be expressed in honest yeas and rust person knows. And to begin, wench. So God help me. My love to thee is sound. Sons crack with form. Sons songs. Pray you. Yet I have a trick of the old rage. I am sick, bear with me. I'll leave it by degrees, soft. Let us see. Right, Lord have mercy on us. On those three, they are infected. In their hearts and lives, they have the plague and caught it of your eyes. These lords are visited, and you are not free. The Lord's tokens are you, do I see? Nay, they are free that gave these tokens to us. Our states are forfeit, seek not to undo us. It is not so. For how can this be true, that you stand forfeit being those that sue? Oh, peace, for I will not have to do with you. Nor shall it, if I do.
Therefore, may these our loves be from yours, and our the love makes is likewise yours. But we to ourselves prove false by being once false forever to be true to those who make us both. There is you. And even that falsehood in itself thus transforms itself and becomes grace. We have received your letters of love, your favors, the ambassadors of love. But in our needed counsel, we rated them at courtship as pleasant jest and courtesy, as bombastic as lining to the time. But more devout than this in our respects have we not been. We submit your loves in their own fashion like a merriment. Our letters, madam, showed much more than jest. So did our looks. We did not help them so. Now at the latest minute of the hour, grant us your loves. Time, we think it's too short to make a world without end to our beginning. If this austere and sociable life change not your offer made in the heat of love, then at the expiration of the year, we challenge you. And by this virgin palm, now kissing thine, I will be thine. Till that instant, shut myself up in a mourning house, raining the tears of lamentation for the remembrance of my father's death. If this thou do not, let our hands part, neither entitled in the other's heart. If this were more than this, I would deny, to flatter up these powers of mine with rest. The sudden hand of death blows up mine eyes.
not Jill. These ladies' courtesy might have well made our story comedy. Oh, come, sir. It was twelve months and a day. And that's the last. That is too long for a cliff. Sweet <laughs> 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 majesty, vouchsafe for me. Was not that Hector? The worthy knight of Troy. I will kiss thy royal finger and take thee. I am a votary. I have vowed to Daphne never to hold the plow for her sweet love three years.
just be a completely different person without me. He's like pushing me both in like my musical singing things and theater <laughs> acting things and literally everything in between. He's been such a great friend and I'm just so grateful to have known him and I can't imagine where I would be today without having a couple
that is the greatest thing that we can give all of us. So thank you. Whenever you